This spell came out when I was doing my week-long exam. Sorry for the wait. Let's do a little intro. Chronal Shift, a very strong feature on the best wizard subclass in the game. Wizards of the Coast thought to themselves, let's make that a spell. Now, you would think that just making this a spell is already better than having it as a feature. But oh no, they made it better. Here we have Silvery Barbs. Welcome to Pack Tactics. There's so much to talk about. Silvery Barbs, first level, enchantment, so you can get this through Fate Touch, which means it's really easy to get for every class. Normally only bards, sorcerers, and wizards get this. You can also pick this background to get it for free, with also a free cast. This is setting dependent, so chances are high this isn't an option at all. Continuing on, reaction, 60 foot range, when you see a creature succeeds on an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw, it's instantaneous. The triggering creature must re-roll the d20 and use the lowest roll. You can then choose a different creature you can see within range, or self. The chosen creature has advantage on the next attack roll, ability check, or saving throw. It makes within one minute. A creature can be empowered by only one use of this spell at a time. Now, forcing the enemy to re-roll. This isn't disadvantage, so that means this works with disadvantage. Gator, come here. Hello! I need you to dodge. There we go. I'm a wyvern. My attack is plus seven. Kobold, you look stupid. No, I'm a scary monster. Anyways, if I bite you now, I would have disadvantage to my attacks. So my chance to hit goes from 65% to 42%. If I successfully hit you anyways, and you decide to use your reaction to cast the spell, what happens then, Gator? You would have super disadvantage. Kind of. My chance to hit is 65% because I already hit on a disadvantage. This is a reroll. In addition, a party member or you get advantage. We'll get to that eventually. If I have multi-attack, what happens if I attack you again? Back to disadvantage! Correct. My chance to hit is back to 42% for the spell only applies to one attack. If you use shield instead, that's a plus 5 AC until the start of your next turn. That's every attack. Shield is safer to use. Normally the DM announces his roll, and if the value is a hit, you use shield to make it a miss. Barbs is a re-roll, so that means you're gambling with dice. It can still be a hit. Barbs can prevent a crit though, so that's a big deal. Shield can't, but still, shield is still king in many cases. So I, I, I advocate you grab both and prepare both. You'll be likely switching back and forth. Concretely, I can tell you in majority of cases, if you really want to shut someone down, you'll be using Silvery Barbs. If he fails, every round after that, it's all reaction cast shield when you have to. That's what I expect. Shield versus Barbs math-wise is impossible to quantify and is the wrong way to look at it. New scenario, I attack normally, 65% to hit. I succeed, you use barbs. I roll again and hit anyways. Here is a cutout of Eric from Fry Minis. He also casts silvery barbs after your cast. What happens then? You roll again and take the lowest. Correct. Rules for combining magical effects. Shoutouts to tabletop builds. DMG, page 252. Player Handbook, page 205. And Xanathar's, page 5. All outline that only one effect of the same name or spell applies while their durations overlap. The duration of this spell is instantaneous, thus the party can directly multiply casting of this spell on one target. Last scenario, let's say I have advantage to my attack, 88% to hit, I succeed, you use this spell, then it's back to 65% again, a normal roll. Same applies to advantage to saving throws like magic resistance. 
That's actually a very cool boost to summon Greater Demon. That spell is one of the coolest roleplay spells out there due to the high risk it has. Barbs can make it so there's less of it. It will be a video eventually. Gator, you can leave now. Sweet! Bye-bye! The second part of the spell, that advantage to next attack roll, that's only one attack. So I expect your chance to hit goes from 65% to 88%. If you're using sharpshooter, then it's 40% up to 64%. That's really all you need to know there. We can finally move on to ability checks. I don't know the gist of the average creature's ability checks at all, so I can't properly analyze this, but what I can tell you, it's very weak in majority of cases, but also all over the place from CR to CR. I might be completely wrong though. Saving throws, con save spells, single target spells, almost every spell got a boost really. But those two in particular got the biggest, so that means there's tons of things to reanalyze. That's a good thing for me, there's more content. Anyways, we can technically be here forever. Let's just tackle some of it. This is already super long. <laughs> con save spells, like let's say levitate, targeting an enemy. Let's say the enemy has a 45% chance of failing the save. He succeeds. If you use Silvery Barbs, his chance of failing is again the same, 45%. You are basically casting the spell again for the cost of a reaction in a first level slot. The value is less for an AoE spell. I'm saying the same thing over and over again. A reroll. Barb's value is always back to a straight roll. Now imagine better spells that can do intelligence save, for example. That's 70%. This is what I think is bad for the game. Barb's forcing the creatures to re-roll saves. It's not broken, but it's so unnecessary. Why did casters get such a significant boost and not marshals? Sure, they got that advantage to one attack. You can also argue Stunning Strike got a boost. But the, the, these are such insignificant footnotes compared to the caster's power. Casters can AoE shut down and force stronger saves on creatures. I'm investing my barbs into whatever's happening there. It's, it's doing more things than whatever a marshal can do. Then once I've invested that slot, I'll give that same caster who cast that big shutdown spell advantage to his concentration save because it's more important to keep that concentration than boosting a single attack. He shut down a guy or two or three or four guys for one minute, hopefully. The enemies have to invest actions to recover. If they do, that means none of my teammates are getting damaged. Yes. That's the optimal move to make from the enemy to recover, but I don't care. That's a win anyways. No way am I spending this on a marshal. Daniel has an article where he explains the math for AoE save spells in detail. I'm gonna skip that because I feel it's so obvious. The gist is when you see a party member cast a single target or AoE shutdown spell and the creature or creatures happen to succeed, use your slots for silvery barbs. That is teamwork. This is a team spell. Don't just think about using this for yourself and your spells. Think about the other players. That's more conservative than blowing two spells on exclusively yourself. Share your pool of resources. This spell can be a pseudo counterspell, potentially foiling the enemy's counterspell attempt. Of course, most casters will be casting counterspell at its level anyways to stop the spell. But when this option is dried up or you didn't have it to begin with, it is a valid consideration. Here's a small list of chances Daniel made. Legendary resistance. This spell doesn't bypass it as written nor intended by the developers. I think you know this. It's been covered by absolutely everyone. Split enchantment does work with silvery barbs because you don't have to give someone advantage at all. It says right here, you can. So that means it's an option. You can't twin silvery barbs though because it's capable of targeting multiple creatures. Feats. The best option is to pick it through Fate Touch. This is an enchantment spell. Reason why this feat is so good is because it's a half feat. 
that comes with a lot of things. Barb's competes with Gift of Alacrity, but Alacrity in optimization is still king here. Barb's is second place. If someone has Alacrity, then Barb's is the pick to make in majority of cases for casters. Bard's got the most benefits out of this spell. Bard's at tier 1 play has a huge problem with AC. This spell does help a little bit with that problem, because at those levels, enemies usually only have one attack anyways, so it does defend you against a single enemy at least. For Eloquence Bard's, this spell stacks with unsettling words. You might argue this is overkill, but you only use Barb's on a success anyways. There's tons more stuff. This video is already too long. Check out Tabletop Builds. Daniel covers more stuff that I didn't at all. I'm linking his article in the description. Same with Trent Monk, Winter Viren, and Fry Minis. All of them made really good videos on this topic. To add on to that, shout out to all of the artists who've helped me make videos throughout this whole year. Min, Morocco, Novatonics, and Drakeven. Check them out on YouTube and Twitter. They need tons of love too. Now for the conclusion, I freaked out like everyone else when I saw this spell, but after sitting on it for a few days, I concluded this spell doesn't have to be bad for the game. This can be awesome, because it does make reaction economy really interesting. Everything being shield or absorb elements is boring mechanically. Now, there's more to think about. That's a good thing to add to the game. The spell as is is probably the most mechanically interesting spell to ever been released so far. This could have been a 10 out of 10 as is, but right now it's one out of 10 because of Marshalls. Marshalls are getting next to nothing. They need a big boost so badly. And if they do, then Silvery Barbs is fine. Wizards and most of the full casters are getting boosted in every single new book just because of the new spells. It's stupid. It's content for me, but I want to cover these classes in optimization, and I can't. They don't have anything interesting going for them. The spells do. The only interesting thing to ever come out of a Marshall is an Echo Knight. So here is what I want from now on. I just want Marshall books and nothing else. No new spells, just Marshall books. I think you get the point. Make Marshalls good, not just casters. Don't ban this spell. Have fun with it. Try it. Merry Christmas, by the way. Bye bye